Hello everybody, um, so today I will be presenting on the varicella and the sinusitis um, viruses um, for the general medical conditions uh, presentation today. Um, my name is Caitlin Webb and the first thing we'll be going over is the 10 question quiz regarding my um, full presentation. So feel free to take a look at this, um, go through the questions, and then as we go through my slides, um, see if you can answer these 10 questions. Um, and then at the end, there will be answers. So I'll give you guys a couple minutes to kind of look over this and get these questions in your head. Okay, awesome. So um, we are going to start on the presentation. So we are going to start with what is the varicella virus. Um, the definition of the varicella virus is commonly known as the chicken box, as a lot of us know it. Um, it is a highly contagious viral infection characterized by an itchy rash and flu-like symptoms that come along with it. Um, which are, you know, fever and fatigue, headache, things like that. Um, but the main part of the var varicella virus is the um, blister sort of rash that comes with it. Um, the varicella virus typically presents itself with these red spots, as you can see in the picture. And they are also fluid-filled blisters, um, so it is very painful and itchy. Um, like I said, the chickenpox is highly contagious, um, especially to those who have not had the disease yet or been vaccinated against it. Um, so you might have had it when you were a child before you got um, the vaccination. Um, so sinusitis is the inflammation or swelling of the sinus lining um, due to infection. So as you can see from the picture, um, our normal sinuses are um, pretty mild and they are open air or passageways and things like that. Um, on the side that has the infection is very swollen, irritated, red, clogged with that um, congestion inside of it. Um, so the causes can be facial pain. You can kind of feel very tender around your sinuses. Um, nasal congestion, it's harder to breathe. Um, maybe you can only breathe through your mouth, not your nose. Um, and the thick nasal mucus. So there can be um, mucus that comes out of your nose when you're, um, you know, blowing your nose or um, it can actually come out of when you cough. Uh, the sinuses are lined with cells that make up mucus and sinus. Uh, can occur when too much mucus builds up in the sinuses or their openings become blocked. Um, as you can see from the picture, that's kind of what internally it would look like. So the causes of um, varicella and sinusitis is uh, varicella is caused by the varicella zoster virus, VCV, also known as, um, and it can be directly transmitted um, through contact of another person who has this virus um, or airborne droplets. Um, it is, again, extremely contagious. Um, and sinusitis is often a viral infection like the common cold um, or results from bacterial or fungal infection. Um, so that's pretty much the causes of those. Um, Direct effects on sports performance of these two viruses. Um, for varicella, also known as chickenpox, um, it can cause fatigue, itching, fever, and um, these you know symptoms make it really difficult to participate in sports um, because you're just so uncomfortable in your own skin. Um, you obviously feel very ill, and you're just um, not to your full potential, and. Also, when you're playing sports, you should, if you have chicken pox, you should just not be going um, because it is very contagious and you should avoid 
spreading it to others who are on your team or on the other team. Um, sinusitis can lead to facial pain, headache, and difficulty breathing, which can really hinder physical performance and endurance. Um, you know, if you can't really breathe very well, it's hard for you to be at your best performance when doing sports. So if you're kind of more bedridden and just resting and trying to feel better, um, because playing sports in these conditions would be extremely difficult. Um, so the treatment for these two would be, uh, for varicella, it would be uh, symptomatic treatment, really, um, you know, including antihistamines for the itching um, and to kind of help with that, uh, pain relievers to help with that, you know, um, irritated uh, fluid fli fluid filled blisters on your body, um, also maintaining hydration and really the best thing you can do to not get chicken pox is to get vaccinated for it. Um, sinusitis, the treatment um, can include nasal decongestants, um, saline sprays to go up um, your nose into your sinuses, antibiotics if it is bacterial or fungal, um, and steam inhalation can help with opening the sinuses and relieving pressure. Um, as you can see from the two images I have put on the slides, um, for chicken pox, you can, yeah, really try not to scratch the skin and, um, irritate those blisters even more. Apply a soothing lotion, um, you can help, like the antihistamines can help with fever and then get vaccinated. Um, and with the, um, sinusitis, you can just help yourself by, breathing in moist air, really keeping your sinuses open, um, and uh, you can use the saline sprays, as I said before, too. Uh, prevention of these two, so like I said before, uh, the chicken pox, the vaccination is highly effective in preventing chicken pox and also avoiding any close contact with infected individuals of this virus. So if you know someone has chicken pox, obviously, do not come in contact with them. Do not share um, dishes. Don't share drinks with them. Don't share utensils, anything like that. Avoid any sort of contact with people who have this virus. Um, the prevention of sinusitis would be, you know, good hygiene. Make sure you're washing your hands. Um, be preventative in that way. Um, avoiding allergens and treating allergies effectively. So kind of avoid getting sick because once you get sick, then that's when you're compromised and then the um, uh, bacteria and fungal uh, sort of things can kind of cause the inflammation in your sinuses. And some additional information that I thought was um, pretty good to know about these two. Um, for the varicella, there are complications that come with both. So uh, the varicella, you know, there is something called like a secondary infection with this, um, and it can lead to cellulitis or um, impetigo, um, which is obviously not good, so you want to make sure you're staying on top of that. Um, there's also something called shingles after you get the varicella virus, after you get chicken pox. Um, it can actually reactivate in later in life so when you're older um and causing something called shingles which is very similar to chicken pox as it is like a very bl uh, painful blister rash that forms on your body um in some cases with chicken pox um it can lead to pneumonia encephalitis or even death especially in immunocompromised individuals so that's something to be aware of if you know someone who has chicken pox in these conditions um sinusitis complications if you have chronic uh, sinusitis and there's persistent inflammation um it might lead to long-term uh, management which is obviously not fun and you have to deal with that for a long amount of time um, if you do not treat it correctly. Um, in severe cases, it can spread to um, the eyes or the brain and leading to serious conditions such as meningitis. Um, so you really want to make sure you um, prevent that or treat it as soon as you can. Um, and 
obviously, if you have chronic sinusitis, um, it can significantly affect daily activities and overall quality of life due to persistent discomfort. Um, if you can't breathe, obviously, it affects your sleeping and other things like that. So you want to make sure you really treat it um, right off the bat. So throughout my presentation, these were the answers to the quiz questions. So you can go back and reference those quiz questions and look at these answers as well. And these are my references for the presentation.